Hi, everybody, and thanks for sticking around and hanging in there on our show. This is a good one, though. I mean, uh, you know, sometimes I can understand why you might decide <laughs> to turn over to a ball game or something. But um, hey, we're talking about a serious issue, and that is the needs of our water supply here in California, especially Northern California. And um, Ms. Heather did a good job at uh, saying we do have great water around here. Um, it comes out of the uh, out of the Sierras in that great snowpack, and um, so we're really fortunate. Uh, but you never know what the needs are further down the road. Um, and as you were saying, that some of the technology now has um, gotten to the point of where we're on the brink, I guess, of possibly seeing the expansion of um, of the whole process of taking salt out of out of salt water and making it drinkable and usable for for the agricultural business. Um, does the ag you know the ag business and the ag uh, sector do they are they buying into this yet what, what's the feeling um, you've had from those guys well I think f for them uh, the cost of desalinated water is probably too expensive for most agricultural purposes mm -hmm. um, although I, th I think for them probably any increase in water supply they feel like it reduces pressure on them mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But primarily, it's been driven by kind of municipal water mm -hmm. needs, yeah, more so than ag. Right. Okay. Um, let's let's talk a little bit about um, you know what the benefits. What are the selling points um, at this point of uh, of using this type of technology? Okay. Well, desalination can provide a number of important benefits. Um, one of them is that desalination is a drought-proof water supply meaning that it's available um, during a drought when other supplies may be limited. So this can improve the reliability of the, the water supply system and help to ensure that there's water during droughts. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, uh, desalination produces kind of a, a very high quality, low salt water. Um, that water can then be mixed with water of lesser quality so that huh. the water can meet drinking standards. So if uh, initially, <coughs> kind of, you had this lower quality water that didn't quite meet drinking standards, maybe it was too salty. It could be mixed with this low salt water um, to provide additional water to the system. <laughs> and, and, and additionally, uh, some project proponents claim that there could be some environmental benefits to desalination. Um, that they're claiming that, that, that the water provided by desalinated water, by desalination, would enable them to really return waters to rivers and, and streams <laughs> and therefore reduce pressures on, on those systems. Um, I think it's important to note though that, that there's really no mechanism to ensure that the water produced by desalination will be returned to the environment. Mm -hmm. um, this water could be used for, 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 for more development mm -hmm. essentially. So until there's kind of a, a direct mechanism, mm -hmm. we have to be a little bit careful about, about claims of environmental benefits. Mm -hmm. When uh, we were talking about that incredible small membrane um, mm -hmm. that uh, sieves out the salt, does it really take out that much salt where the water could actually be um, have less salt in it than even like fresh water sources? Um, s well, some fresh some of our fresh water so sources are, are very salty. For example, um, the Colorado River water mm -hmm. is is very salty, and it has substantially less salt th than that. Mm -hmm. Um, wow. So it depends. There's a range in, in the salinity of, of what's considered fresh water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but but it can, you know, and part of it depends on, on how you operate the desalination plant. It can produce very um, low salt water. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, that's pretty wild stuff. How about the amount of water that can come out of um, one of these plants? Um, like you were mentioning that the, the proponents have been talking about you know, re-establishing water levels in, in some of the, uh, the streams and rivers mm -hmm. and all. Um, in order to do that, they must be thinking that the capacity to pull out and, s and to produce the fresh water must be considerable. I mean, man. Mm -hmm. um, well, some, <coughs> of the, some of the plants are in the, the 50 million gallons per day wow. range. Those are some of the larger ones. Um, there is talk of expanding those to 80 to 100 million gallons per day. Uh, most of those are, are in the Southern California area. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a plant in the Monterey area that is large, um, and that one there is kind of a, a way to um, return the water to the environment. Um, in that particular uh, plant, the um, it was the state board found that that the community was overdrafting and taking more water from the Carmel <laughs> River than they were allowed. Huh. So they have been ordered to return that water. Yeah. So in that case, there may be a way that that water would make its way back to the environment.